Welcome to the Market Geometry Morning Mentoring Sessions. It is Friday, October 16th, middle of the month. No surprise that it might frost next week. As Tommy Skilling would say, ain't a frost on Friday. <laughs> anyway, let's look at the markets. Uh, one administrative piece before we get started. Like it or not, I've made my do with the devil. Ready to hear it here first here, guys? Anybody? Nobody cares? Here we go. No, don't pray. Don't pray. It's okay. I'm not going to work for the Fed. No, Sean wants me to be the president. I said, I don't want to be in any president, any country where I'm the president. <laughs> uh, Arizona, that's a possibility, but no, no, no. Prescott, no, I didn't get a house. No, my, my wife may fly out. But anyway, here's the news. I cut my deal with the devil yesterday around, uh, Paul, what time do we finish? Four o'clock? Uh, about 4.30, I got a call from the CEO of StockTwits. And uh, this is not going to affect us in any way, guys. This is all they're going to do. Ready? I, can't, I will again in one second, Gerald. Um, I am going to host a live show on TV. Stock Twitch TV, whatever the hell that is. It's a, uh, I don't know if it's internet broadcast or what they do if they do it on MSN. Anyway, I'm going to do a live broadcast. It's one hour a week. It's no big deal. Thursday, Tuesday or Thursday evening at 7.30 Eastern Time. Tim's World, Tim's World. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my God. No, and all I'm going to do is uh, hopefully we'll be able to take questions. You'll be able to drop charts off and take questions for an hour and just talk about the markets. Just do what we do here, basically. But the reason, reason we're doing it is because we're going to highlight then Tuesday through Thursday or Tuesday through Fridays. They're also going to be co-sponsors of, stock, of uh, this morning session, which gives us better technology as well. No, I... I I can't do it Friday evening, AK. It's Tuesday or Thursday. That's what they want. That's the that, that's that's the demographics. Because apparently, excuse me, bored spouses at 7:30 in New York <laughs> get up from watching TV and go over to the computer or whatever. So, it's Wall Street Wayne's dude. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know. I, I I'll find out more about it today. But we we did our deal yesterday. So. I need a band. <laughs> I need a band aid, is what I did. Oh my God. Oh, they're not actually bringing anything to us. We won't have any banners from their site on our site at all. They won't have anything there from there over here. It's us over there in the sense that our content, they love our content and they want to be able to just say, hey, if you're a StockTwix premium member, you need to go to this morning session because it's really good. That's all. It's no big deal. You know, I it's not going to do much for us. In the, I mean, except that, except that, yeah, it'll only benefit us. It'll it'll get Catlin some help. Um, you know, it, those kind of things. It's no big deal. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'll be able to watch the stock things all over the world. I think it's via uh, internet. So, is Kramer show my model? No, no. It'll be a lot like this. I guess I, Mary, are you here this morning? Happy birthday, Mary. You're, you're 26, aren't you? You're going to take the vet out? Everybody send Mary a happy birthday e email. Mary at marketgeometry.com. Tell her how, what a wonderful job she is and how beautiful she is. It's snowing. Well, no, don't do that then. Don't take the vet out, please. I, I don't want to read about you or get an, a bad email. Please be very careful. But enjoy your birthday. Send everybody send her an email. Give her a million emails. All right. Here's what I was saying about the hedger. So that's a stock twits news. Flat crack house. Ooh, I like that. Fed. Flat crack house. <laughs> Andy. Oh my god. I'm drinking kombucha, which has a 0.5% alcohol in it, I believe. I don't know what you're drinking. <laughs> oh, fiat. 
I guess I can't even read. Yeah, you know what? I'm crying. I'm laughing so hard. Okay, here we go. Here's what I was saying about the hedgers. Let's stop and think about this. It's October. As stupid as this sounds, because we don't grow that much in the way of grains right around the city of Chicago. Let's think about it. It's mostly houses, right? And the farms that are, are, that are around here are sod farms for the new suburbs that were springing up, although they're not springing up at the moment. The, the real farms are in southern Illinois or Indiana or Iowa or Nebraska or Iowa, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yet, the weather in Chicago is what dictates the price of beans and corn for the most part. At least the flashy part, the flashy bits, not the big trends, but the little flashy bits like this, the stuff that's really fluff, okay? This is really just, this is Tommy Skilling going, a uh, hint of frost that Thursday. <laughs> okay. That's all this is. Well, what happens is the farmers, the guy's to getting ready to take his stuff out of the field, right? He's got all these soybeans. He's got to sell them at a price. He could sell them at 880, right? Tommy Skilling comes out and says, he hit the frost on Thursday. It pops up. It gets above 10 cents. He walks into the grain where he stores his grain and says, hey, could I hedge my soybeans today? And the guy says, sure, my price is 10.004. And he hits the bid instead of hitting the bid at 8.91. Good for him. Because in his mind, he's not going, oh, it's going to 16. He's going... Uh, it's going to frost on Thursday? What's the big deal? It's the middle of October. Of course it's going to frost on Thursday. Who are these idiots? Trading this, in a lot of ways, that's why I say I don't like to trade the the parts that are event-driven, because it is like predicting the weather. And to be completely honest, I, I, I recently read a study by the National Oceanic and you know, whatever, NOAA, whatever it is. Um, and they did a study of how weather, how accurate weather predictions are now versus 50 years versus 100 years ago. And much to their surprise, we're no better at weather predicting than we were then. I'm not surprised. Andrews was pretty good with charts, but they're pretty awful with their, uh, you know, they got the Doppler radar going, they got all this other baloney, and they're not very good. They can tell you, if it's going to rain in five minutes, but they can't tell you what's going to happen tomorrow or the next day. So, Yeah, they did it with the action reaction lines. That's right. Anyway, so farmers are selling in here. They're going, thank you, Jesus. I'm taking my beans out of the field today anyway. Let me just hit this bid. And the flood is incredible. The supply of beans. So it's no surprise that this thing turns down. So if you happen to be long, I don't know if you would be, but maybe on the baseline, on a retest of this baseline, or the test of this baseline. And you got to spring out of the hole. When you get to this red median line or higher, you just got to go aloha. Because this just doesn't make any sense. Do growers sell a futures contract? Yes, because they have to hedge. They have two choices. They can straight sell the beans. If, the, okay, if they walk into the greenery, they can sell the beans. If it's not out of the field yet, then they have to sell a futures contract to lock it in. Or, yep, or, or, ready? Or they can sell them to the granary. Now the granary's left holding all this grain. The granary has to protect themselves, so they sell the futures contract. One way or the other, they hedge. Yes, and the banks these days are demanding that they hedge because last year, by the way, some, I would say it's something like 30% of the grains, uh, the granaries in the United States went out of business because they didn't hedge. Yes. In fact, the, and Paul, Paul says this, and, I'll, and then I'll magnify it. The primary reason for futures contracts was to allow producers to hedge. For those of you that think all we do is steal money, and certainly that's what my father said about me. You don't work. You just steal money from people. We facilitate trade. We allow farmers to produce crops and get consistent prices for them instead of having a grainer saying, well, I know that they're X on the East Coast, but that's not what they are now. No, actually, Eduardo, just so you know, Eduardo says, tell that to the farmers. Just so you know, Eduardo, 
No. Just so you know, here you go. Ready? Farmers are some of the biggest traders in the world. There is a big lot farmer, meaning somebody that has more than three or 4,000 acres, that doesn't have tremendous screens, doesn't know more about grain trading than we know, I'm going to tell you. Our, our purpose is to provide the liquidity without being liquid, liquidated. That's exactly right. All right, take care, Don. All right, so let's take a look now. Uh, Scotty says, do, do this. Not really, but darn close. But the idea, basically, this was not so much as a trade as much as it, if you managed to get long, for some reason you wanted to get long, and you see that now start to backfill, don't make this any, you know, you'll have, there are people that will read these, write these books about the magic of gaps and all this stuff. Look, let's, let's just think about this for a second. It's just real simple. It's October. The gr the grains are coming out of the field. They got the run up. They're they're thanking everybody. Believe me. The supply comes out of the woodwork. Okay, let's go to currencies. I know people are going. Oh, okay, thank you. I really don't care that much about beans. We'll get you there. You'll be trading cocoa and sugar and cotton and beans and everything else. Because there's, Paul and I were talking about this easier, uh, this yesterday. There's a lot of easy money in some things that people don't trade. That once you learn how easy the money it is, how easy the money is, you will trade. This is 30 minute euro. Here's our set it and forget it diamond. Thought we had a label on this rascal. Well, anyway, here we are down at the energy point. Had a nice test down here. Near miss down here. We're down at this line. Anybody going to go along at this line? Four separations so far. Okay. Oh. Drop me an email, Tom. There's several. Hi, George. How are you? Yes, Mark, that's what I was going to point out. Price looks to be less efficient. It's rolling over. Take a look. Here's your high. At best, you got you got double highs. I actually think you got a lower high. And now it's less, and fit, less efficient. You can see um, we probably are going to fill in this canyon, I would, or this mountain, I would think, at minimum. Maybe even go for this, but certainly for this. What do you think, Paul? Because this, remember, this isn't a median line. This is a action-reaction line. What do you think? Because I know this is one of the setups you like. Or would you just throw the warning light out there? Warning line. So Paul would put out the next one out and say, hey. In fact, let's do that. It would be here to here. So it'll be the next reaction line. Be here to here. Ooh, that looks like it's going to fit the bill, doesn't it? And then we would grab this. And we would grab this. I'll do it again. That might not be bad. So we got lower highs. We should head into fill in this at the minimum, maybe this balance line or baseline right here. And even that might work. Depends on how fast it drops. How about a down sloper? Sure. Nice little entry there. Let me change the color.
Nice little entry here with almost no stop at all right there. And you had already taken out this prior low. You mark it. Stop. Ooh. I think you can afford even this. There you go. Target. Target on this, I think, is probably. You got two choices. You could go against the sloping line, but I don't really think it's done that much for you. But I really think it's uh, it's either right here. Take some off and go to break even here and run for here or here. That's my opinion. Energy point of the warning line. So that'd be right here or down here. Paul. Down down here you mean. Okay. Anybody else? If it hits the upper median line parallel, you mean up in here, Brian? If you get a shoot back up there, like a, a 730 shot up. Hang on. Hang on, Dallas. Brian? They're all green. Wait, hang on. Uh, the, the intersection of the green and red right in there, you mean? Come on, you can do it. I can barely see straight. I know you can do it. Dallas says, what about the line of force? It looks horizontal to me. Uh, it's a big trading mess, yeah. That's why I think it's going to come down to this line probably around here because this looks like just a mess. And I think it'll fill in the mess. Nine o'clock. The question is, what I'm asking you is a rally up to here to 114, or excuse me, 149.20, something like that. Is that what you're saying, Brian? Lower. Well, we're closing right here. I'm not sure you want where you want to sell. Yeah, you want to sell this upsloping green line on a switchback, right? 47.60 low. No, I I don't I don't see. Uh, you want to do a, a tiny a tiny one from here? I'll do it. No, I can't do that. I can go from here to here to here, but see, I got this taken care of already with action the action lines. You know, we don't need more lines inside there. We don't need no more sneaking lines. Hang on. 149.10. Yeah, that's what I said. That's what I said, Brian. Yeah. Okay. So you, Brian wants to get short of here. If we get back up here, can he sell here with a stop above? Absolutely. Sure. Sure. We've taken out, we continue to take out lows. So it comes back up here. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Let's see what else we got. Um... Um, 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 um. How did our bond work out yesterday? Oh, and I got all kinds of... Oh, my God, is Shane, man. He's so mad at me for calling this the craft line. He's going to call his congressman. He never voted in his life. He's going to call his congressman now because... <laughs> he wants to get short at 149.10, Eduardo. He doesn't want any stinking line named after him. He's like me. Crafty like a fox. Me thinks he protests too much, I say. What do you think? I told him if he wanted, I'd call it the share line. <laughs> but now he's, he's trying to hide behind Wendy, his wife. He's trying to say that Wendy is the share fan, not him. Even though he was walking around Caesar's Palace with my two little guys. Excuse me. I am bad, you know. I am. You're right, chef. He, the shaft line. <laughs> oh, I like that, Mary. I don't know if we can get it in print, but I like that. 
Watch your mouth. <laughs> he was walking around Caesar Palace with my two kids, uh, one on each arm, and they got by this life-size poster of Cher. And he was just standing there with his, you know, with his hands across, like Ferris Bueller, with his hands across his chest and his front leg forward, looking at this picture of Cher. And you, you know he didn't want to say it because the kids were there, but he was, I, he was going to say, that's one tasty singer. <laughs> I'm going to get a nasty phone call today, I'm going to tell you. Anyway, <laughs> oh, my God. So in the bonds, here we are. Here we go. And he said, by the way, I can't draw. <laughs> I, I, I haven't learned his, I haven't learned his methodolo- methodology. So, oh, my God. Okay, here we go. Oh, God. And, you know, I'll take the criticism gladly. As hard as he works, as much as he helps everybody else, and he certainly can chart like a demon, I'll stand up and take my beating like a man. So here we are. We're down. We came down. We filled the mountain. It's beautiful. We can obviously dump out the 100% line. Oh, jeez. Um, and could we draw simple stupid lines? There's our shift. What do you think of that? Not the ugliest thing in the world. I'm afraid to draw. He says, Dallas says he sees another craft line lower. I'm afraid to draw it. I don't want him to hit me. <laughs> Range to long trade. Yeah, I think so, Chef. Siding parallel on the shift is the craft line. Yeah. All right, uh, let's look at a wide, let's look at 144 or 1444s, um, and just see where this rascal is in time, so to speak. And I said I thought this was all done, and we're just uh, con- going to continue to bleed lower. And you can see we're bouncing on double bottoms down here. But Paul says, "All this mention of craft has me feeling, feeling like craft singles cheese." Two forty bonds, sure, Dallas. One second. Um, but this is cascading lower. I don't see the end of this yet myself. Krista says, "Can I please answer this question?" No, I can't. Yes, I can. What about traditional shift medians? Traditional or moderate? Uh, moderate. Oh, jeez. Traditional or modified? What is that? What you're asking me? No, Krishna, I would not trick trades off of traditional. There's a reason why Andrews modified them. They are a better vehicle. Okay. Do this paper trade with straight. Original shift median lines. Yes, it's time to wait some bars here and see what we get. Well, here, Krishna says this, and then I'm going to give you my answer. I find a lot of traditional ones catching the tune perfectly in Indian stocks. Okay, then let me give you a statistics lesson if you don't know it. If you do, then you'll be laughing at me. But you see that, but do you have statistics on it? And by statistics, I mean more than 500 examples. Statistics don't start until you get to 500 or 1,000 examples. Then you need to find out whether or not they work as well as modified shift median lines. Yes, Andrews modified the shift median line. That's why it's called the modified shift. <laughs> Paul says Andrews did a recall on shifts and modified them. Yeah, that's correct. Anyway, we're we're visual people. We see what we like. Okay, you might see. Let's say you see 
I'm not being mean, Christian, but let's say you see five of them, okay? Eduardo, 50 instances of anything is not enough for statistical significance. Sorry. Sorry. No. That's random at that point. No. No. That's like people that run Monte, Car Monte Carlo simulations. And then go out and trade and they'll wonder why they go bankrupt. No. Anyway. Just so you know. But anyway, Krishna. We're... Humans are visual people. We see what and remember what we want. So you might say, let's say you see ten of them, okay? And eight and five of them are good and five of them are bad. You remember the five like they're golden, and you completely forget that the other five didn't work. And you go, my God, this 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 normal shift line is just incredible. Well, all right, do the statistics and find out if it's any better than noise. You're right, Eric. Two hedge funds blew up simply on Monte Carlo simulations. That's exactly right. Not only did they blow up, but we're talking about two really big hedge funds, not little hedge funds. Yet, and I, the funny thing, Eric, they both got money again. That's what really gets me. Monte Carlo simulation, uh, you run it over and over, and you double and double and double and double and double every bet. It's like a martingale, yeah. You want to know what are the odds of going bankrupt, basically. Okay, so here we are on the bonds. Somebody wants the 240 bonds. Um, I don't know if they're in there, so let's just put them up. Z, B. We'll find out if they're in in a second. And apparently they're not. Um, one second while we refresh. Although that is a lot of data. on pop for me. Well, it's all the data I have on this machine, apparently. It should grab more, but... Now, on the 240s, you might make the case that we're in an upward channel. Yeah, I'll play the channel line. You want me to play the... Something like that. Okay, well, that was interesting. <laughs> oh, my God. See why I don't do those parallel lines? They don't like me very well. Never mind. I do it my own way. Yeah, that's what I have to say to everybody that emails me and says use the parallel lines. I'll do it my way. <laughs> you might argue... They we're in a rolling chop. It's been on the way all the way up. And in fact, if you doubled it, I see my little eye spies that. Here's your reaction. Here's your action. Here's your center line. How's that? That work for you in the 240? Yeah, I don't like the parallel line tool either, Mary. I agree. Balance line at 122. You know, I'd need to see more data, but let me run something for you anyway. 121, 122. No, I'm not getting more data on this. I did fix Amazon and everything yesterday, but it wasn't a totally lost day. I did that in stock twits and yelled at the hospital. Um, the good news is, uh, there we go. That's not a bad balance line. The good news is I don't have to go to mail. By the way, oh, 
Oh, thank you, David T. Uh, the bad news is I may have to take Monday. Well, no, I won't take the Monday morning session off, but I may have to take off Monday and or Tuesday. My wife is going to have to drive me into the University of Chicago to have extensive CAT scans done. They're worried about this bug lodging low in my lungs. Apparently, it's something that if you have no immune system, uh, it can find some creepy areas in your body to colonize. And uh, I'm, I have a worse cough yesterday and today, so they're a little concerned. So I'll let, I'll let everybody know that's involved. But I will be doing the morning sessions because we wouldn't leave that early in the morning anyway. We'd just run into traffic. But I just want to make sure this sucker's dead. That's all. I'm one of 300 people that got this bug, apparently, and um, I would like to survive it, as they say. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. Oh, I'm, I, you know, I'm not dying or anything. I'm just, I just want to kill the damn thing. Anyway, so on the 240s, it came back up to this balance line. We're in a rolling chop. I don't know that you can say it's over yet. It's still making higher highs and higher lows on the 240s. That goes all the way back to June. But I would say this. If you take this low out. This chart's going to start looking pretty awful. What do you think? So, any trade below, I don't know, 117? Yikes. All right. Let's grab another currency. Let's look at... Let's all go to the movies. I want to know what Canada did. Oh, the Aussie-Canada race. Let's look. Aussie was pulling ahead, got to the top of the upper median line parallel. Slowing down there a little bit. You'd expect that. You, Paul thinks this is the breather. Well, we'll see. So far, it hasn't pulled back much. Um... I mean, I can imagine. I'm sure there's a ton of people that would love a pullback to here that never, ever, ever dreamed that Aussie was going to make this kind of run. Now that it did, they're not long, and they're looking to get long. I, I can imagine maybe it'll get back down to this level, maybe even down to the median line down here at 90 double O. What do you mean by Christian? Chris, what do you mean by that? If it gets the parity, well, you'll get it. But you got to get it. We got to get the parity. Yeah, so, so near yet so far. Yeah. No, it's not. I don't think it's over. In my mind, I think this stuff is picking up steam. Paul says that the Aussie run, the pound has run 700 ticks. Yeah, but that's from the, that's because you're from the Empire. Salute when you say it. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's take a look at the Canada real quick. Uh, where's my 240? Uh, Canada's pulled back a little bit, and Kraft pointed out, by the way, he thinks Canada has seen the bottom, just so you know. I think he's trying to warn me, but you know, everybody has their opinion. I believe I don't want to misrepresent what he says. I believe that's what he was trying to say to me. I read it this morning at five thirty. So, uh, he, uh, yeah, I'll I'll try and show the chart out, chart on Monday, so I don't misrepresent him. I, I think that's what he said, but. He's a par parody party pooper. Well, we just won't send him a cup when it gets there. It's only two cents away. I'm not worried. Got the 101, uh, 10201. There you go. It's not over yet. 
Not over until I say it's over. Well, 105.80, that's fine. That's all right. Chef says it's going to 105.80. That's fine. As long as it goes to parity, that's fine. That just gives us time to finish the mugs. How's that? Time get, Gets time for Jennifer, Jennifer to get the uh, addresses of the banks. That's all. <laughs> it's no big deal. It's going to parity. And, and more. Um, okay. I don't want pound yet, so I'm going to close this chart. But I'll put a pound up for you there. Do you want... Uh, I'll, I'll do 240 for you there, Paul. Just for the empire, okay? For the queen mum. That's not good. They won't show me the pound, Paul. Well, it's hard to have any channel when it's not uh, refreshing. Come on, Ensign. What are you doing here? There we go. My Ensign's on the Sniggle Fritz. What ho, old chap? I don't have a very good British accent, unfortunately. I have to work on that. Oh, you didn't know? This is the new pound. They only trade one bars. Then they change to a new currency. Yeah. This is pound 377741. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's jumping around like a fish, isn't it? What in the world? I'm going to give it one more chance, Paul, and then look at this. Then I'm going to say it ain't happening today. What? I don't know what I did. What did I do to deserve this? Look at how many bars it's refreshing. 168,000 bars. Look what I get. 12. Hit reset. Uh... My reset button disappeared. Ah, uh, where the? There it is. Not it didn't help. Rebuild visible. There it is. Jeez. That is a nice spike. Let's look at this. I see this right away. Anybody see that right away? Did that? Anybody's eyes gravitate to that line? Okay, so then your eyes are getting better. That's good. Now, did it gravitate to this line? Not perfect, but you get the idea. Especially if you go into here. And does it do this for you? All this consolidation, tank full of gas, somebody throws the match in, poof. Even one above? Okay, I'll give you one more. Sure. Absolutely. Why not? It This chart's singing, isn't it? Yeah, it's 20% art. Absolutely. But you know what? The nice thing about it is, Paul, maybe maybe I'm Paul Gogan, but it was easy for me to just, I mean, I pulled up the chart. I haven't looked at pounds in where, you know, I forsake looking at the pounds. Um, the line's there. It's it's not, it's not hard to find. And, and believe me, if you had to rate where I am on the scale of uh, 
my own abilities, a scale of 1 to 100 today, I'm at about a 3. I'm not thinking very straight. I couldn't make tea this morning. I'm, a, I'm ashamed to admit I could not make green tea, if you can believe that. I was too sleepy. But our 3 is your 90, maybe. But I'm waking up because I've had my kombucha. <laughs> if I had to go long in the pond, where would it be? Oh, I'd be long uh, right here at the low. Right here at this low, right here. At the tick. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's me right at the bottom. I'm, no, I, I'm kidding you. I'm, I'm kidding you. Yes, and I'm out at the top. That's right. Um, yes, uh, Peter says, if I do not take care of myself, I certainly cannot take care of others. Just so you know what I'm doing today, Peter, at 830, I will be pounding on the table at my doctor's office, changing medications. And on Monday, I will be at the University of Chicago seeing uh, one of three specialists in the world that deals with this bug specifically. Um, we'll still have a morning session, but after that, my wife is going to take the day off. Uh, she, she donates her time to schools, and uh, she's going to take the day off. She's going to drive me to Chicago. I'm going to see this specialist. This lady's going to do some CAT scans and that kind of stuff. I, I'm taking care of myself, trust me. But just so you, just so you guys know, superbug, it means anti-resistant. Mary says, not only that, Mary, this is a bug that in the past... Um, never migrated inside the body, in the human body. It was on the outside where they had like uh, kidney dialysis or IV lines. But for some strange reason, in the last 18 months, here and in Britain, people that have no immune systems are suddenly finding this bug inside their uh, no, inside their chest. No, I, they don't know how, it's so new, it's only 18 months, they don't know really how it's going. So, um... It's better to get the bolt, the gold bug. Yes, it is. You know, it was, it was really... Somebody just said, uh, would I consider letting one of the un, other mentors do a morning session? Um, I don't, how would you guys feel about that? If I, you know, if I was not well and I decided to take a day or two off, if I let Scotty or somebody do a morning session, if they wanted to. But see, now they'd have to say yes. Yes, but Scotty, uh, you'd have to think of whether or not you... Okay. Well, anyway. One thing, just so you know. Can only be better than me, says Philip. Okay, okay, good. Well, I get to watch it. Just so you know, um, when, I, when I was really sick with Crohn's disease in the 80s, the thing that kept me alive was trading, the adrenaline from trading. I really think when I'm sick, I look I look forward to these morning sessions, just so you know. Joe says it might be very interesting, like seeing other traders in the forum. Yeah, I agree, especially because these guys are talented. So here we go. Do I think a retest of the 164 line is a good short entry for pounds? Depends on how it got up there. It's horizontal enough. If you could afford this for a stop, it might be interesting, but more likely what you would need would be See, we haven't taken out any lows here now. You want it to come up, leave a low, take out a low, then come back up and give you a stop. Be Excuse me while I burp there. Um, what would be ideal is if you left a little nipple here above, then came and took out this low, then sold against here. And the way this thing has been screaming around, that's not asking for that much. Make sense? We need to make a stop, and I'm not sure that we have one yet. And I'm not sure that this rises over yet. But it's certainly singing. And we got the problem is, see, we have a tank full of gas. So you got to ask yourself, is that all there is, or is it this? Well, I, the chef says top. I'm not so sure. Depends on what it does up here. Let the market show me. Paul says draw fork from the low prior to the extreme low. Okay. There you go. Good eyes, Paul. I'll let Scott talk and Paul draw. Exactly. Or maybe you guys want to you guys want to co-host. Anyway, 
Somebody could trade the pound. Apparently not just me. Let's see what we got here. Uh, we had Canada, we had Aussie, we, we did Euros. Oh, heck, let's go to commodities. Beans, i already seen it, been there, done that. Um, crude, oh my God. Mr. Sean, don't you love it when Mr. Sean is right? Don't you just love it when he's right? My God, the Pop Tart Man, yeah. Well, he is doing, Mary is, you know, Sean is doing part of on the DVD. It's not going to be his own DVD, but he's going to do two trades on there for the, this is for just for the members only. And uh, he'll go over two trades, what he was thinking, why he thought it. And uh, I'll draw the charts for him. I'll help him clean up the charts. But and then uh, Lucy's going to do Vela too. But that'll be these. Will, those will be just for the members. Then there'll be uh, some other material that'll just for the members. That way, if if you decide that you want to grab the uh, DVD, you'll get stuff that if they if you just buy the core DVD, won't be on it. Then of course there'll be knowledge expansion packs, and we'll give you some knowledge expansion packs as well. So anyway, I'm blown out as they say on that second half. Didn't cost me much. Um, so I'm back to hunting in oil. Am I going to hunt for longs now? Well, let's take a look. Yikes. Pretty vertical over there. You know where this goes, right? We all know that this goes to 148. Mary says the basic is done. She's just waiting for some recordings for me. Now we're working on the knowledge expansion packs. Yep. So DVD is getting close, guys. Um, I'm going to still have to buy another close, I think, another daily close, because I wanted to close. I want to see a nice cl another close up here with good separation, but uh, it's pretty. It's getting pretty hard to argue uh, against, against some longs. I want to see some action in here, but it's getting pretty hard to argue against longs. I like, I, you know, I was, I like buying down when it was 35 when it was ugly. Um, this is looking awful pretty, and at some point I'm going to have to just throw in the towel and say, I guess that was it. Do we have a full tank in crude? Yeah, you'd think so. I did beans already. You missed them, Agnes? Yeah, don't you hate it if Jamie and the boys, boys actually make money? I hate that. Well, Magnus, basically, they gapped open. Here, I'll do it real quick. Because you're so polite. Hang on. Gap tire on Tommy Skilling going, Yeah, in a frost on Thursday. Then all the farmers that were taking beans out of the field ran to the granaries and sold their beans. That's what's causing this, because they're saying, gee, what a surprise. Frost in October? Daryl says, hi, Daryl, how are you? Good separation means this. Um, let's look at this bar here. See where this bar opened right here? And it closes all the way up here. It closes with great separation. Even better would be, let me open this rascal up, where it's really important is look where this bar opened let's pretend that this bar was right on support at the green line this is where we care you want to know if there's buyers down in this area right here it opened on this line and it closed all the way up here that's tremendous separation that shows you that the buyers are in control that bar right here that, that got it for you daryl Okay, good. Uh, I 
copper. I don't know that the boys actually believe, the copper boys actually believe that the economy's in high gear. Doesn't act like it. Beans look like they're going to trade to me. Magnus look like they're going to slowly fill the gap and slowly head on down as crops come out of the field, unless you get a heck of amount of rain in the Midwest for the next week. And that's not what's being forecast. We're looking for basically um, weather in the 50s and 60s. It's dry. Ought to be perfect weather for them to harvest. So I, my suggestion is down to sideways, but probably down. No time to be trading. What you should be looking for now if you're hunting, just so you know. Oh, Magnus, well, you know, having to have a good trip. Um, if you're hunting for a bean trade, you should be looking now for March or even Novi 10 longs. But probably not until after December, sometime between December and April. If you want to look for a long, you want to wait for things to calm down, then you should be looking in oats. Because oats give you the best bang for the buck, just so you know. If there's a freeze on the Mississippi River, believe it or not, most grains still go that way. Um, oats will give you the most bang for the buck. So, if you want to hunt along between now and December with a big freeze, oats would be the way to go. We can look at them next week if you want. But right now, there's nothing there. Uh, Eduardo, I don't do spreads. They do work in this time period, but you know what? There's they're arbitraged to death. It's just not. It's it's not. It's not worth it's not worth your time. You have to have a huge amount of capital. Guys I know that do grain spreads have ten million dollars in their account. They make a, they make twenty percent rate of return, and they have no risk. I mean, not, they have very little risk. How about that? I shouldn't say no risk, but it takes a huge amount of capital because they're doing ten, fifteen, twenty thousand contracts at a time. We we won't be doing that. Uh, I'm certainly not doing Microsoft and GE. Um, that's the wrong hoggies. Where are the other hoggies at? Um, there we go. No. Yeah, there we go. Hogs. We're still wondering. Let me refresh it just to make sure. Okay. We were run doing, and a good thing I did refresh it. get the gold next we were wondering um we took our four bucks off the table so we lost a little bit in crude we made a lot more than that in hogs still got some money in, a lot of money in canada from the spring believe it or not now we're wondering in hogs because it's come all the way from 50 to 60 so it's a 10 dollar move 49 to 60 11 dollars i do the math right almost 12 dollars um, at, what, at some point, where's this thing going to turn around? These are febs. And I don't see any reason yet to get excited. I don't know about anybody else. So we'll just keep watching. Are there any books that tell you when to trade what commodity in what month? Not that it'll make money for you, Chef, I'm sorry. Eduardo. Yes, I think it is time for them to sell them down to buy back. However, we need price to say they're selling them down first. So we need to, we need the okay. We we need the we need to see some mojo. We need it to turn and look like a rounding top. It'll tell you when it, look look at when it turns. It'll tell you when it turns. We need to see that, and when we'll get short in this type of area. So we need that to happen. We need this to come down and then come back up and make a lower high, and then we'll be selling a lower high, something like that. Not, it, it's not the hogs are not mature yet, as they say, in my opinion. Let's look at uh, gold, two forty. How about that? Marked up to death. You can see, G, 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 whatever. However many of them are left. Gee, how many are left? Looks pretty equidistant, doesn't it? All the way up. Look at the stair step all the way up. 
and they're right at the center line. Everything else there? Let's make this. Uh, I don't think we've used blue. Horizontal. Am I not worried to trade gold when the market's manipulated? Philip, just so you know, I'm not much of a gold trader. And when I do trade it, I a day trade it. I don't portfolio trade it. I'm not a gold bug. Since this is the first pullback in the stair stop, um, I want to know what it's going to do right here. Otherwise, I'd be looking for this area down in here, this baseline right here, which also happens to be the top of a shift or of, of a median line. Yeah, this is do or die time, yeah, in the rally. Um, what? I, the, oh, my God. <laughs> do I remember Jake Bernstein's infomercial that showed long-distance truck drivers trading beans from the cab? Here, John Rich, yes, I do. Jake Bernstein used to live about a mile from me, by the way, although he's moved away now. Um, I got a funny one for you. Ready? Let me paint this picture for you. You ready for, you ready for the laugh of the day? Is he the real deal? I, you know, I, I'm gonna. Uh, he's a Chicago guy, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that alone. How about that? Ira Epstein. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm, he, again, he's a Chicago guy. I'm gonna leave him alone. Okay. I don't. I don't. I don't pee in my own backyard. Can can commodities be traded on price just with no knowledge of that market? Absolutely. It's just easier to trade them if you know, for example, that summer is not a good time to trade the grains because it's event-driven, that's all. It's the easy money is made in the fall and the spring, that's all. Yes, I know, Krishna, don't ask again. That's the fourth time. Stop. If I want to go there, I'll go there. Um, Shane drives a long-haul truck with his wife and trades out of the cab if that's a Scary thought, by the way. And, he tra and trades damn good. <laughs> he's got he's got LCD panels in the front of his fifty eight wheeler, whatever it is. Yes, it's true. Take care, Mark. Do I ever trade the stock indices? Sure, I trade. Sure, I trade the E mini S and P's. Daryl, you're new. The problem is they don't open for another hour, and I don't trade the first hour of the stock indices because I wait for market structure to form. So we would be, um, we're trying to project formations two hours out. There's really no use in it. Yeah, laugh of the day with Jake Bernstein. Yes, absolutely. You're, you'd only be in trouble if you use Jake's seasonals, John Ritz said, yeah. Yeah, uh, okay. E mini S and P's is only a day trade for me, yes. Yes, absolutely. Actually, since I'll tell you what, it didn't used to be. I used to trade E mini S and P's and NASDAQs and Russell's overnight big time. But at when decimalization came, those markets all changed, and now on top of that No no no. Two thousand two. Yeah, I traded them heavy in the late 1990s, early early 2000s. Um, when death, decimalization came, when they went from quarters to 10, 10 cents, right? Those markets trained, changed tremendously. And if I didn't tell you this, I'd be a lion, you know what? <clears throat> I managed a lot of money, and I got a phone call the day of 911, September 11th. Please, the gentleman from, from San Francisco Chronicle, don't email me telling me not to use 911. Thank you for paying for the monthly fee, but don't send me emails. Anyway, September 11th, I got a phone, you know, the phone calls. I I did not have a position on that morning, so I was not trading. I was eating breakfast with my wife and my 18-year-old son, Sean. 
And he said, you know, better, you know, the CTAs that had money invested with me, you better, you better turn on the TV. Oh, my God, what's going on? So I turned on the TV, and, of course, the first tower had been hit. And I have to tell you, that changed my whole perspective about having overnight positions in the stock indices. There's easier money in the world overnight than the E-mini S&Ps. How about that? I can make a whole lot more in oil. I can make a whole lot more in grains. I can make a whole lot more in currencies than I can in the stock indices. You can trade the stock indices if you want. That's fine. Theo says, market profile traders around these rooms as of late think that market profile rules and the big guns are mainly pro market profilers. Do the floor guys still use market, for market profile as their core analysis? Uh, nobody, the majority of no one, just so you know, doesn't. market profile is not a major tool by anybody anywhere. I'm not saying that there aren't people that use market profile correctly. And let me just tell you one more time. I was the original funder of Market Profile. Just so you know that. I put up the money. It was, well, it was the bank's money, but... Uh, well, Dave, Peter, I, I funded Peter Stoudemire. Just so you know. There's, there's nothing wrong with market profile. I like it, okay? But if you think that it rules the market, you're drinking something stronger than kombucha. How's that? Well, yeah, but uh, Dave T., you're telling me that he does? I'm telling you that Peter don't make that kind of money, okay? AK says, people confuse a description of what happens on the floor as market profile. Yeah, I would say that's correctly true. Pete Stoudemire is, is not a uh, top 100 trader. Sorry. He thinks he is, but he's not. He's a nice guy. End of discussion. Anyway. So, no. They don't... They, they don't... Market profile doesn't rule. Floor traders... Believe me, if you, if you walked around in the floor, you would find very few people using market profile. What's left of the floor. Very few. And, and Karen's absolutely right. Most people don't know how to trade it correctly. That's exactly right. You're absolutely right, Karen. Most people, well, it's like any other methodology. They grab the easy stuff and then they, you know, think they know how to do it. Anyway, back to charts. Gold, so gold, I, don't, I intraday trade gold and try and, uh, you know, I take out my 7 to 20 bucks, take my money, go home. I really very seldom have core positions in the gold. If I want to have a gold position on, I'll be long Aussie or short Aussie, one or the other. It's, it has about an 86% correlation, by the way, over the long term. Now, you can see that Aussie didn't suffer the sell-off that gold did quite as distinct, but it did turn off a little bit. Maybe that's why Paul thinks it's the pause that refreshes. I don't know. Um, let's see. Were there any other commodities we wanted to grab? There's nothing going on silver. There's nothing going on cotton. Hogs we did. Natural gas, I'll put it up just because somebody was asking the other day. And I think this gap is the roll. Silver, I'll put it up, but I'm getting nothing in the way of refreshes here, guys. Howard. There we go. Rounding top. Hard to tell. My guess is we probably have a destiny to fill this gap. Yeah, I think we're likely to fill this gap. 
Uh, Mary? I, you know what? I don't... Uh, Ooh, 917. No, I don't. Should I? Did he fix some stuff? Yeah, I see it. So it says resources, yeah. Okay. All right, good. I'll update. Well, yeah, I'm running, Eduardo, I'm running lot, lots of stuff here. I have to to give you real-time uh, real time data, plus on, real-time feed, plus on top of that, a quality uh, video capture it takes a lot of resources. Um, now, I got to take my beating publicly here. Come on, come on, update. You probably commented on moving averages, but while watching yesterday's video, I noticed a reference to changing lines of force isn't a moving average, a continuous line of force. Yeah, but all I'm doing when I do a line of force is say, look, I'm running it through the center and saying, look, the momentum or whatever has changed, but I'm not going to trade off, to, trade off of it, Don. The problem with uh, moving average traders is they actually think they can trade off of that stuff that's got a 20 or 40 period lag. Yeah, it's Eduardo, exactly right. I said over before we got up here. The market says, think again, buddy. Which is why I said when I wrote it up here, this is what I think, but now how I'm trading. I trade what the market tells me. Make sure you don't get short just because I wrote over up here. And the market indeed says, think again. Where is it likely to go? Well, certainly to the parallel line here, which is where we're at. And if you believe Hagopian, hell, it's going to 1,300, 13,000. Or 1,300 in the S&Ps. Yeah. I don't know. Three bounces off this median line, and it took off like a you-know-what. That's right. One, two, three drives to the top, and we're about to take that out. So trade what you see, not what you think. If you didn't if you didn't get that before when I said it, when I wrote over, this should be a perfect example. Just because I write it's over doesn't mean it's over. I wrote this because I had that in, my, in the back of my mind. You can see what the back of my mind is worth. Nothing. No St. Tim, no St. Anybody. Let's look at the NASDAQ weekly. Coming up to its uh, nexus up here. But again, here's the 3A2 all the way up here. We're only halfway there. So it'll be interesting. Now we've broken through the my bastardized version of the, sh of the, of the sh uh, craft line. What are we going to do when we get up here to this first measured line? That'll be the interesting thing. And then lastly, the Dow. And we're just making runaway gaps now. It's probably just my data more than anything. Okay, there we go. We're just, we're just running away to the top. So we've broken through both the mountain tops. And really, this area right here, which is the, also the halfway retracement at the top of this median line, this is the area that we're likely headed for. 10,003, something like that. Is the numbers three drives significant? Yes, Daryl. Um, go back and look at some of the videos, or um, I don't know if I could point you to one of them. There's certainly some articles. Go to moneyshow.com. They won't spam you. Log in. Look at all my uh, look at all my articles, and there are several articles on three drives to the top, three drives to the bottom, how to trade them. Um, this was from a, a farmer in the 1930s. Um, this is one of the earliest formations. This probably came from the Phoenicians. Um, one, two, three drives, and you'll draw a parallel line. One, two, three drives, draw a parallel line. Um, one, two, three drives to the bottom, and you can see they held, they turned up. If they take this high out, you can expect, it really it's a trading channel, if you will. Eduardo says, 
Have you ever seen bear market rallies turn on a dime to the downside? I've read they just go when they go. Yes, Eduardo, that is the danger here. The problem is that when this market turns... Take care, Rob. When this market turns, you'll never see it. It'll just... You'll have one of those thousand-point down days, and it'll just keep right on running. Phoenicians? Eduardo, actually, they're doing uh, some really fascinating research, archaeological research, and they found actual charts. How about that? When you see them, you almost faint. Also, the ancient Chinese, 2500 B.C., right before they uh, flooded the area, three, three Gorges Dam in the river, they were marking the uh, low levels of the river, and they find all these parallel lines drawn on these, on these markings of the lows. So basically they're charts. Yeah, Eduardo, done in clay, absolutely. It's really great stuff. Well, I get it from the University of Chicago, guys, yeah. But you can get also probably get it on the Internet. Bank of America, Peter McIntyre says, Friday, it lost more than $2 billion in the third quarter as loan losses kept rising, providing further evidence that consumers are still struggling to pay their bills. Well, i got a better one for you, Peter. We're looking at buying houses, right? And I'm, all, I'm ready to go. I found the house I actually like in Arizona. I'm telling my wife I wanted to fly out there. Then yesterday, did you see the repo news? Repos are up 40% month over month last month in Chicago. 28% month over month. Higher than the Great Depression in the country last month. So my wife says, you know, why don't you just slow down, Big Bob? <laughs> Scotty B says one in 135 homes in the U.S., it's under. It's it's more than one in a hundred, Scotty, in Scott B in in uh, Illinois. By the way, you still have no qualified buyers for your mom's house. Well, okay, yep, yeah. My wife's the brains. Yeah, she's the yeah. She's the brakes on Tim the nitwit, is what she is. So you know what she said to me? We're flying out there December twenty sixth. Just slow down, okay? I found this house. I really like. It's got five acres. It's got five bedrooms, five bathrooms, five walk-in closets, and a separate trading house. <laughs> 400,000 people had power turned off last month from Pacific Gas. Oh my God. That's not good. Oh, in New Jersey. Oh my God. Thirty. Paul says 35% of all mortgages are for more than the house is worth. Yeah. That's far closer than what... Yeah, it's just that the banks haven't foreclosed because they don't want to know. Okay, take care, Magnus, and I'll see you in two weeks. But, yeah, the recession is over. That's right, Paul. Peter says, move on. Yeah, I agree. So, anyway, yeah, just so you know, when they turn, when this thing turns, if it turns, I uh, I heard a good market technician, a guy I actually enjoy. I'm not going to mention his name because um, I haven't asked for his permission to borrow this, but he was talking about 1929. 1929, here's what we got. Ready? We got a 50% rally out of the hole. Yeah, I know, Frank, and and I told him I moved into Prescott Valley. Yep. Um, anyway, 1929, we got a 50% rally out of the hole. Then it turned on a dime, and we made new lows. So, don't be surprised if this thing makes a 50% rally. You can get it on, you want the 29 chart? You can get it on uh, the website. Go to the info section and look under the Andrews thing, you'll see Marichelle's chart. It's there. They got a 50% rally, and then we made new lows. And we made new lows quick. And 50% is not far away. So this is behaving just like 1929. Mary said that rally took eight to nine months and it pooped the bed. Well, I think that's likely what's going to happen here. I don't know what will be the event that makes it poop it. Uh, some people inside the industry tell me that it'll be the... Um, Real estate loans coming home to roost. Um, the commercial real estate loans. We'll see. Yeah, new lows from here would really hurt, wouldn't it? Ugh. They're so far away. Well, it only took them six months to get up to here. 
And if you get some bars, look at this bar right here, Dallas. How long did it take to go from here to here? About two weeks. Now measure it from here to here. Two weeks. Wouldn't take long, would it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying. I'm just saying. 2010 and 2011, there are huge arm mortgage readjustments, yeah. And, the, and right now, the government's not in the mood to spend money, so what are they going to do? What if the world flush dollars and bond prices go up? Um, I don't think so, but I guess it could happen. The only thing I can imagine is, the only way I can imagine that my, our ways out of this is to just basically repudiate debt, the United States, and say, what bonds? Everybody else has done it except for the United States. It's probably time for us to do it. But, of course, we won't do that. Uh, I can hear Pop-Tart, man. Any last requests uh, in the indexes? Yeah, the formation does take us to 50%. Then maybe we'll poop the bed, like Mary says. So, good news is, Mary's got the DVD just about done. Yeah, I'm going to go hang with the little guys before they go. Great, John. I'm glad you enjoyed the week. It'll get better, believe me, as I get healthier. And uh, hopefully we'll have Lesson 4 up shortly. Have a great weekend. Everybody, enjoy yourselves. I'll see you on Monday. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it. I will talk to you before uh, we go to UFC, but uh, there will be a session on Monday. I'll see everybody on Monday. Take care. And uh, have a good Friday trading. I'm Tim Morge, marketgeometry.com. I'm out of here.